Friends, welcome to Halfway There. This is Eric Nevins here. And before we get the show started, I want to invite you to get my free download. It's called What to Do When You're Mad at God. Listen, this happens to all of us at some point, whether uh, you think it should or not, it does. And in fact, it happens all the time in scripture. And so I wrote this free download for you um, on the basis of the book of Habakkuk. I know when's the last time anybody read the book of Habakkuk, but it's such his interaction with God is so cool. And I think it has something to say to us about how we move through anger, disappointment with God without losing our faith or getting stuck in the spiritual desert, because those are the things that can happen if we don't figure out a strategy to kind of come to God and and deal with that. So this uh, download gives you that strategy. You can pick it up at halfwaytherepodcast.com right at the very top. You'll find it and uh, just throw your email in there. And then I'll send you emails also every week whenever the show comes out so that you'll know that that's going to and a number of other great things that I've got in the work. So go ahead and get that again, halfwaytherepodcast.com. Can't wait to see you over there. Thanks a lot. Let's get the show started. Well, welcome, friends, to Halfway There. This is the show where we have honest conversations with ordinary Christians about today's Christian experience. And I'm excited to bring to you the conversation that we're about to have with my guest. She's the founder and host of her own podcast of Altered Stories Ministries. And uh, just been spending a few minutes here getting to know her. I think you're going to like her as well. Uh, Please welcome to the show, Michelle Saunders Gutch. Michelle, welcome to Halfway There. Thank you, Eric. I'm so excited to be here this morning with you and looking forward to sharing uh, the glory story that I have of who Jesus Christ is in my life and also more about what he's doing in terms of moving in me and also a little bit about the great things he's doing in Altered Stories Ministry. Yeah, I think that that's a great name, and I know that you have a great vision. I can't wait to hear a little bit about that. Um, We've been connected for a little while, and I know we know some of the same people, which is wonderful. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing now? Okay. Well, um, first and foremost, I'm a wife, a mom, um, an aunt. Um, I'm blessed to... Uh, also be a member of the United uh, Methodist Church of the Resurrection here in Olathe, Kansas. Um, I'm a friend, and um, I love dogs. Uh, I have a little schnauzer named Bella, Mm -hmm. and um, my husband and I are empty nesters, and we have a daughter, a grown daughter. Uh, She is uh, executive director for the Muscular Dystrophy Association here in the Overland Park area. Anyway, so what God is doing in my life now has been a a journey of transformation and change. And I, um, through this journey, have learned so much about who I am and um, leaning into who he is and a a walk of faith. And as you mentioned, um, I'm in the process of the launch of Altered Stories Ministry, uh, and it is a ministry where we help women share their amazing God stories, testimonies, uh, so women that need to hear them can hear them. And I had that call in my life for some time to do this. I started out as a broadcast journalist major early on, kind of deviated from that and moved into the business side, um, but felt God's call definitely in my life. Um, to uh, begin moving uh, forward in providing a platform for women to share their stories while at Compassion International. Uh, So a lot going on. Um, Right now, I'm officing at Office Evolution in Overland Park and trying to uh, get this ministry launched. Oh, yeah, that's great. It sounds like a really, really cool vision. How'd you come up with Altered Stories? You know, I was so blessed. I worked at Focus on the Family for a short period of time. And during that time, I interacted with their broadcasting group. Amazing group, very professional people. They do amazing broadcasts through, you know, 
uh, John and Jim um, Daly, who's their president. But fortunately, I was able to sit down with them and I met them, uh, their team. And when they knew of this vision that I had, they wanted to support it. And so what they did is, you know, they gave me names and, and all kinds of insight into how to be successful in this type of ministry. And uh, there's a wonderful woman there, Christine Beebe. She uh, was really helpful and she started vetting uh, with her team Uh their their team they're they're really gifted and creative and coming up with with you know names and so they gave me a few names and I vetted them with my potential supporters and listeners and we came up with the name altered stories and I went to a trademark attorney started looking all over to see if there were other ministries out there with that name and the closest I could find was altered state which is a Christian clothing store here in mm. Overland Park. That's Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really cool. Um, yeah, I think it has kind of an epic sound to it, which is awesome. That's cool. No, thank you. It's it's definitely been received well. Yeah, that's good. Well, all right. Well, let's go dig into your story a little bit. I know that as a kid, you were um, a military kid, a military family. Um, tell us just a little bit about how you came to Christ. Sure. Um, I was blessed to go to a little Christian church in Providence, Rhode Island, where my mom was um, born and raised. And while my dad was serving in Vietnam, my mom moved back there and we started attending this Christian Missionary Alliance Church there in Providence and became friends with the pastor and his children And I was going to Sunday school and received Jesus Christ through my Sunday school teacher there at the Missionary um, Alliance Church. You had an interesting experience um, in in Sunday school where you learned about your leadership um, gifting. Can you tell us that story? Yeah. um, Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, I was able to read very young. And I had such an interest in reading the Bible. And my Sunday school teacher saw that, and I'm an achieving personality, and she captivated that um, and started rewarding, you know, me for certain memories, you know, script, scripture memorization and everything. And I won awards. And, you know, at that time, of course, she was sharing with me and also my teacher, um, my actual first grade teacher that they saw gifts and leadership gifts. And, you know, we we're, were able to, even at that time, put me in situations that would help me shine. So tell us a little bit about how you learned, uh, like some of your early experiences learning about, about Jesus and about kind of what, what this meant for your life. Okay. Um, well, you know, my mom, Uh, found Jesus Christ through the Billy Graham crusade. She was a Catholic um, and converted to Christianity and was very hungry to build her relationship with Jesus through, you know, the church. Um, And of course she exposed me to Sunday school and, you know, of course there I had, you know, like we had talked about the influence of the teachers, um, also, she was big on Billy Graham crusades and watched them all the time. Mm, and so then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I grew up with Billy Graham, you know, like he was my pastor. Oh, yeah. You know, they say he's America's pastor. Uh-huh. Um, well, he really was. Um, I can tell you other great stories about that later. But anyway, um, so the Sunday school teacher uh, was was a, a high influence, and of course the pastor was a high influence when when I was younger. And then, um, as my mom, you know, continued to um, attend church, um, you know, there were people that God put in my life, uh, and other even other friends, you know, that were brought in to my you know family that really did make a difference. And of course, you know the reading the Bible and all mm-hmm. that. Um, I know that as you were, you were growing up, your life got a little bit, a little bit more difficult. Um, how, how did that affect you? 
Well, particularly you know, sorry, particularly I, your faith is what I wanted to know. Yeah, I I think you know at the time when our family was going through so much, so much, um, it was hard for me um, to really believe that God loved me and that He loved my family and that God was a loving God because you know the people that that were then around me were people that were not very loving and they were very imbalanced. And, uh, you know, there was just control that I saw. I didn't see love. And so, you know, that affected kind of my perception of Christianity and my faith for, you know, a season Um, as my mom got deeper and deeper into this, you know, cultish group of Christians and involvement there. And then the effects that had, you know, and what, and, and what came out of it, Mm -hmm. um, at that time, um, you know, I didn't see Christianity in a positive light. I really disliked who Christians were. Oh yeah. So yeah, I didn't, I just didn't see God loving at all. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. So that can happen if you, if the people who are supposed to be following God don't love other people or they won't try to control them, then that, kind of shapes how you see God as controlling and not loving. Exactly. And, you know, I'm newly Christian, forming my opinion and growing. But, you know, so when you're not very mature in your faith, you just kind of look around to see what other people are doing, right, Right. as a child. And you see this, you see this abuse and you see, you know, and you just, people are so amazingly broken, but you don't have that concept. Without Christ, without, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's just unfortunate, but, you know, God turned it. So, yeah, that's, that's a good so, thing. Absolutely. Well, it's so interesting how when you're when you're young, I think what you said was, yeah, well, we just kind of look around and see what people are doing. And you sort of assume that that's how life should be. And mm-hmm. uh, and that's not not necessarily how that should be. Um, and we don't know that I've been thinking about that lately about, um, you know, I have, I have four kids and especially my younger ones, but even the older ones do this. And I think we all do it where they're trying to explain something that they don't understand. And they come up with, uh, you know, the, the funniest connections, you know, with like, Mm -hmm. so, um, as you know, I, I recently left my job, like just as an example, my, my youngest son said, well, dad, you know, you don't you don't have to go to work today. You, so you can just do whatever you want. Right. <laughs> so well, just cause I don't have a boss somewhere. doesn't mean I don't have to do anything um, <laughs> here. And so he just kind of, he made that, he made that assumption and he tried to connect some, some dots that didn't make sense. I think we do that as in our spiritual life with God as well. Sometimes. We absolutely do. Yeah. And sometimes it's interesting how that, how that works out and, and can be kind of damaging. Um, yes, it can be because we want to put God in our box sometimes, but you know, again, it's your, your maturity process. It's, you know, yeah, how in tune you are and, you know, people, people are in a different journey, you Absolutely. know, in their faith, everyone is different. So it's very personal. That is for sure. Absolutely. Well, that's part of the premise of this whole show is that, hey, every journey is different. And instead of, you know, it's, it's not just, uh, hey, my life was bad and I found Jesus and now it's good. It's There's a lot more to that journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Great did, work you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Well, there, have you ever had a time when God felt far away or distant since you, since you came to Christ? Yes. Yes. Um, I think I've had peaks and valleys of that um, throughout my Christian walk. You know, I I rebelled against God when I was in my early teen years um, due to the consequences of that rebellion. You know, that didn't put me in a good place with God. And, you know, just certain times when through my own actions that I brought in sin and separation from God. And so... You know, I I will say um, sometimes God also tests us and, you know, he knows how to encourage and he knows how to test and he knows how to refine us. Um, So, yeah, there's there's been, you know, of course, 
you know, when I was um, believing, I, I kind of ventured off into my own in my late twenties and, you know, thought I was all that. And, you know, I was all caught up in materialism and me being God, you know, uh-huh. I'm about me and I'm God, you know, and it's all about me and I don't need Christians and I don't need the faith thing. It's all weak kind of thing, you know, and, you know, part of that, um, you know, was a journey of my own and separation of my own from God. But, you know, God knew what he needed to do to humble me. But even then, and you know, when you're walking with God, you know, as you say, um, there can be times when God just says, look, I'm going to test you a little through these through these waters. And sometimes you can feel quite alone and feel like gave me God's not listening to you yeah you know and i have found that in those seasons god always brings amazing people to encourage me through those seasons or those times or you know whether it's my husband or whether it's you know he'll even speak through my daughter you know say a word or there'll be you know friends and dear friends so i've known a long time who pray with me yeah well so and you know they'll walk me through that was there a time so like, how did God bring you out of that that time? So it sounds like you kind of walked away from your faith in some sense, maybe not totally. Um, but then, how did you how did you come back? What happened? Yeah. Well, um, one story of that was through a very difficult divorce. Mm-hmm. You know, I I unfortunately. I uh, had been married, was pregnant with my daughter, and at the time, uh, my husband that I was married to had made a choice to leave the relationship, and I was on my own with no job. I was on my own to raise my daughter, um, and, you know, I had to draw on my faith. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes people have to hit bottom to come up, or, you know, that mm-hmm. those are situations where they see that, you know, they can't control it all. It's, there is someone bigger. And, and so, you know, that, that is kind of what turned me around. I, but actually prior to that, I even felt a call to the church. I think it was thinking about being a mom. Mm. And I started going to a church in Walnut Creek, California, and we had friends and they were growing in their faith. And I think just about that time I was going into Sunday school thinking too. And of course, then the marriage ended but I think the Holy Spirit was drawing me back. Um, and this is how I was you know, being drawn back. But then God knew what was ahead. And and so, mm. you know, he brought just my parents to be there, my former husband's parents. He brought great pastors and great people to support me. And he, you know, a, a job and he put all the pieces together and you know, a, a, a mutual friend who's my dear friend today uh, here in Olathe, you know, going through a similar situation, you know, and having to face raising a child on on her own, on my own, you know, and what that future looked like is a scary thing. But, you know, God, God drew me that way. And he was so there. He was like my husband, you know, just all those, those things, um, to help me through, you know, and, you know, I grew more in my faith and, you know, in my journey of, as a Christian, God brought me back into the fold and brought in healthy Christians, Yeah, you know, wonderful, loving, godly people there in the Denver area to, you know, to really encourage my faith and had, you know, brought in mentors and even a, a, an amazing woman, um, who wanted me to be part of her ministry. It's called the Covenant House of Love there in the Denver area. And then my friend, Diane Andrews, who has r and Retreat Ministries. You know, God brought these women to encourage my faith and, you know, to um, help me heal and to get me through, you know. So, yeah, you know, it, God's so faithful. I think that's so interesting because it, you know, a lot of times when we're looking for experiences of God and when I'm trying to wanting to hear about that, so many times it's the community that God brings around you during those difficult times that is really the way that he's present with you. 
Yes, I agree. And I, I think that's been my case very much. I mean, I see it here in Overland Park. I see the amazing people that God is putting in my life to help me raise up our small group and the support of the women in the group. And then our support from our pastor here um, in Olathe, Pastor Jason. And then, you know, the the amazing um, women, you know, the women in our group, um, you know, in our in our Saturday morning women's group and then Office Evolution, these women, you know, the husband and wife, uh, Aaron and Ryan, who run this. It's like a ministry, but, you know, they're all willing to step up and help me succeed. You know, just the Kansas City community is just mm-hmm. amazing in that way, too. So yeah. when God's in it, he'll bring the people to you. Yeah, And, of course, someone like yourself who's helping me today and others that are willing to interview me or help me or help me promote what I'm doing in the ministry of altered stories. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's God is so faithful. Yeah. What'd you learn about yourself through that process? Oh man, <laughs> I've learned that I am a person um, that really needs others encouragement at times. I've learned to that, you know, through prayer and through the word and through, you know, um, seeking God, um, that he shows up. Mm. Yeah. What God shows up. What does that look like for you? Just prayer and, and reading the word and seeking him. Um, well, it looks like to me every, you know, every day, um, you know, I spend time in, in prayer throughout the day. Uh, I, you know, have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in my life. Um, I also, you know, of course, um, go to church. Um, I fellowship with the community of believers. Um, I read, you know, the Bible. Um, I do our our church has given you so many tools to be able to do devotions every day. They have an online that's a GPS, um, which is really cool um, that you can read every day and get, you know, get scriptures. Oh, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of that. Um, it's taking time to be alone with God, you know, the mindset and, you know, just. It, it's a relationship. I mean, it's something that's nourished. You know, my husband and I pray every night. Um, we should, you know, we do devotion, Psalm devotion too. And oh, that's cool. it's just, you know, being a part of who I am. It's sharing it, you know, faith, you know, through altered stories, my faith and, you know, sharing Jesus Christ with women that are hurting and a need. And God has given me so many opportunities to do that just in person or even through my podcast. Oh, so yeah. Absolutely. pretty amazing. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm definitely a big fan of podcasts and, uh, and so I, I've, I listened to a little bit of, um, of a couple of your interviews and you do a good job. They're, they're really good. And they definitely share that kind of transition and that alt that change story. Well, thank you. I, I was blessed. Um, the woman that's been helping me produce um, is just an amazing woman. She's Pensador Productions, and she's very gifted. And uh, she's given me some coaching and kind of helping me along, too. But she did a lot of the producing of Dr. Jane Dobson's, you oh, know, wow. um, radio show. And she has done her own. And she's, you know, I've been blessed that God put the right people at the right time in my life. Oh, yeah. You know, so I feel God, like, you know, God's God, when God's in it, he's, yeah, he's going to bring those people alongside you. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So that's that focus on the family connection coming back and helping out. Yeah. Even though it was a short time I was there, boy, you yeah, know, God. I know there was a reason and a purpose for, yeah. for my, my work there. You worked at Compassion too for a while. I did for almost five years. So tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I was blessed to be able to start working in, uh, today it's a global marketing and 
um, global leadership office area, but they've kind of made a lot of changes. I started out in a division. It was uh, called USA, but it was the primary, um, the core of all their, you know, sponsors, donors, revenue, all the marketing, you know, sales, um, serving, you know, the, the call center, all those groups within Compassion uh, as a business project services manager. Um, so I was brought in to uh, work in a, in a group and help lead uh, project managers and business analysts. Uh, and then I was asked to help them build out their project management office as they were maturing and growing in what they were doing in their initiatives and so I was fortunate to do that, too, and then along the way, partner with a lot of their other group areas and um, even got involved with their huge transformational project um, that is since implemented across the world. So and then traveled, uh, met my sponsor child, learned a whole lot about missions ministry, mm. uh, learned a lot about how to build out an organization, all the infrastructure, and then was involved in their women at Compassion and helped coach some of the women that we brought in as speakers and also helped uh, facilitate these sessions that we would do for the women. And we streamed them. And that's kind of where I was blessed to come up with vision and the platform. And I just, God really showed me, this is where I want you. This is where I want you to put your gifts um, for me. Um, you know, and this is where the vision came in yeah. um, of altered stories. And it's just, you know, it's been evolving. Oh, yeah. That is for sure. So being at Office Evolution is is really, I'm going to evolve. This is evolving. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, part of your story that uh, you'd kind of share with me earlier is embracing yourself as a leader. Would you say that's true? Yes. So, so tell us a little bit about like, because I, I hear that in, in what you did there at, at Compassion, but t tell us, a, can you just give us the broad strokes of how you've, how you've done that and how that was, you know, maybe um, not where, where you were headed and how God's kind of used that to, to bring you into this vision? Sure. Well, you know, this, the start of my understanding of my gifts as a leader started in first grade when the teacher felt I had leadership gifts and would let me, you know, watch the class for her when she stepped out. And, you know, I didn't know that much about leadership, of course, at that time. All I knew is I, I liked being the one that was a center of attention. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> um, or, or, or being the one in control. Um, uh, and I, I learned a hard lesson with that um, because I had high standards and expectations of myself and then, of course, of others. And that, you know, that will always cause me a little consternation. But regardless, um, you know, God used me in um, the leadership roles that he, you know, put me in. And a lot of it was something I never really sought at, sought after, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, when I first was promoted into leadership, I was working there in the Denver area and I was working um, in a uh, call center. And, you know, all I thought about was the people. All I thought about is, you know, I want to love on the people and I want to get them to work together. I want to bring them into unity and I want us to shine. And an amazing woman by the name of Kathleen Suchek there in the Denver community saw that gift and said, you know, I'm leaving. And guess who I'm going to say, who I'm going to recommend for my job? And she said, you. And I was shocked. Personally, I thought I had to have everything in line, every kind of perfection, mm -hmm. every kind of degree, pedigree. And you know what? God said, no. No, you're going to take this job. And it was an overwhelming, but I always loved on people and people and seeing you know, wanting the best for them has really always been my heart. Um, so, you know, through that transition and then, you know, in flourishing in those roles that 
I have been was blessed to be in um, in leading others. You know, it just, it was always, no matter where I would go, even if I started out as an individual contributor, I would be moved into some type of leadership role because it was just my natural ability, you know, to, to lead others. Um, it, it, it wasn't, it's not an ego thing. It's not a pride thing or anything. It was just, that's who I am. Uh-huh. And so trying to, you know, take people and help them and develop them and make them, you know, support them and, you know, serve them. That's the impetus of why, you know, I believe God has moved me and transformed me and he sees my heart, not for just him, but also for those and wanting to help those that need, you know, need help and support and to give back uh, in so many ways. And so, you know, leader transformation. I mean, I, I've gone through every kind of leadership training at, in the Willow Creek Summit. I mean, I've been blessed beyond blessed to have incredible mentors, you know, women, strong women leaders that have come across my path and, you know, just are amazing. Um, and then, of course, through the Willow Creek Summit and just the amazing stories of women leaders and and just you know, learnings, you know, whether it, and men, you know, Andy Stanton, like you said, you know, we, I've heard Bill Hybels was, you know, always, you know, very gifted in that. And also, you know, bringing in Jim Collins and, and, tra- you know, uh, there's uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, I think Travis Davis is his name. And, you know, there, I, I hope, I'm saying that correctly. Um, but there's, you know, every time John Maxwell, uh, Cheryl Sandberg with sure. Facebook, you know, these these are all amazing leaders. And then, of course, Beth Moore, you know, Beth Moore in uh, my learnings um, of her and her ministry and what she's done and through the teaching of her Bible studies. And, you know, it just now I have Pastor Adam Hamilton who I'm learning from, you know, we're learning from is an amazing, amazing pastor. Um, so anyway, I just, so many different people that I can't even give credit. You know, there's just so many that, that I've been blessed with and God has brought to me or, you know, I've learned from Tom Peters is one in secular mm-hmm. and, you know, they're just all many. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you, have always been concerned about the people, which I think is the first lesson of leadership, right? Yes, I believe so. I've always seen people, um, my, my success as a leader has always come through people. I mean, even where I'm at with altered stories ministry without the, the women like Sandy Williams and Lexi Voorhees who are helping me, um, and the other, you know, um, volunteers uh that i've had you know and then also you know my former spiritual mentors who've launched two nonprofits, and then you know the the women um that god has brought to me that have learnings in this area someone like yourself i mean it's just it's a it's it's to me it's all about others helping you succeed too you can't do it all Mm -hmm. you know even when i've led teams if it wasn't for the teams of people that I were that were under my leadership or I was blessed to work with and come alongside with to do what we needed, our work, you know, that's how I've been successful. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like so, you've been successful at every level of your of your life, um, you know, just by, by using those leadership gifts. I th- I believe that yes, um, and doing the right thing and and putting God on the throne. Yeah, absolutely. You know that that got us center centered, and doing that. I mean, I I've had definitely you know growth. Don't you know I've had growth areas, and you know I've had to learn some things along the way there. Um, and I'm what, I'm working through. What that. What's the biggest lesson you've learned? Um, I've learned that you have to be careful how you speak and your tone and that not everybody receives what you say the same way. 
So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, um, the, you have to be careful about how you say things. Yeah. You know, and I, and then early on when I had that little girl that didn't color in the lines in class the way that I liked, and I said, that's ugly. And I pulled her paper and she cried. <laughs> that was not a good thing to do. Yeah. And um, I had to learn from that. And I've had to learn through leading others too, you know, that I have had to, I have to be mindful of each person and how they receive communication and their sensitivity, you know, all those things, you, you know, words can really sting. So not just actions, but you've got to be careful Mm. in how you, how you talk with others. Yeah. I learned that one the hard way pretty much every day. So (laughs) 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 I get it. Yeah. I just, people just are you know very sensitive. So high emotional intelligence, I work, you know, you have to work on that, but yeah. you've got to be, you not so much care every about what people think all the time or anything like that, but you've got to, people have said to me, you think too, you, you sometimes think too much of what other, you know, you want other people's approval. That's not true. It's, I want to make sure that I don't hurt the person. Mm. You know, I want to be mindful of each person. I do treat each person that God's blessed me to come in contact with as there's someone special. Yeah. And I want to respect them. You've got to learn to respect people. So learning how to respect others is huge. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely true. Okay, well, I want to hear a little bit more about what you're wanting to do with Altered Stories. And you've talked about this a little bit, but take us into that. I know you want to, you know, the podcast is a platform for women to share their stories with God. Um, but mm-hmm. so tell, tell us a lot more about that. Okay, great. Well, so, you know, what I am hoping is to be able to refine what we're doing uh, in terms of being able to um, broadcast across the world. Um, I want to be able to have the technology in place. I want to have the download of the um, podcast, maybe even get to a place of where every day I'm bringing on like more of a show format Mm -hmm. where we're bringing on, you know, guests. I want to refine it more there. I want to be able to, you know, also um, eventually, um, you know, get some products out there, you know, that can market the ministry, you know, so, you know, we can continue to share the glory story. Um, You know, I'm working on right now, uh, you know, just, getting, you know, the board more formalized, getting, you know, our social media uh, intact where we have more of a presence on a regular basis, but truly that, you know, the nonprofit establishment is huge. And once we get that in place, we can start. So it's my hope uh, that I'll be able to raise the funds that's needed to be able to do what I need to do um, by launching this by late summer. Um, and that's kind of what my thoughts are, but then my vision of course, is to be able to maybe even be picked up on a radio show segment. Um, you know, just continuing to share Jesus Christ and who he is and to bring people, women, you know, women, um, although I know there are men interested in hearing my podcast, you know, into a a deeper relationship or into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And part of that, too, is that women, when they're healed, they can be better in their marriages, they can be better in their community, they can be better as mothers. You know, you hear that story, when mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. (laughs) That's true in my house. Yeah. So, you know, the role of women, I want to, I want to restore it. I want Mm. women that, you know, my vision is, you know, I see, you know, the, I don't know if you, my logo shows an altered story, but it shows the daughter of the King. I I was blessed to have this um, logo that was painted by um, one of my dear friends there in Colorado, her daughter, Olivia Alba. She uh, 
made this and I just feel like it was just inspired, but to see, you know, the transformation and see, you know, the victory of being a daughter of the King, you know, and, and being completely brought into wholeness and healthiness like God did in my life through my background and how he showed up and brought me back, you know, and into being, you know, a whole and, and I would consider, you know, I'm not perfect, obviously, and have still a lot of growth, but that's my vision, you know, to see that. And, and then that changes the world that changes communities that changes, you know, and Jesus is the core. He's the hope. And that's my vision for that. Yeah. So change women's lives in order to change the world. Yeah. Help women heal. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think now's the right time. There's definitely, you know, what we've seen in the last year with uh, some of the, some of the stuff going on in the the media and, and huge figures finally being uh, called into account for some of their behavior. I think, uh, it's, the time is right to say, hey, there's the healing is not not just in the the exposure of wrongs, but it's in coming to Jesus and um and finding finding him. Yeah, it's interesting. Relentless women put a post out there that I shared, and it's called I Love God and I'm proud to say it. And then they have me too. Hashtag me too. Mm -hmm. You know. The Me Too movement, you know, is a movement of great controversy, and there's a lot of different perspectives out there. But the bottom line is we need to love others. As Christians, we need to love others. We need to learn to be what Jesus modeled yeah. in terms of loving other people. And so, you know, love God. Loving others. I mean, you can't love without God's love, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. The right way. I mean, this is just now we're talking from a you know a Christian's perspective, you know. So I just feel that strong about you know showing the love of God, and we need to do that. There's a lot. There's a lot to say. I think about about the Me Too thing, and um, you know, I. I would love to see, this is what I like about what, what you want to do. I want to see more people say, uh, okay, yes, this happened, but there's also, there's grace, there's, there's forgiveness, but we all need Jesus. We all, we all need him. Uh, whether you're healing from abuse or, um, recovering as, as an abuser, I think, I think those people need Jesus as well. Absolutely. And I mean, Jesus came, he did not want any man to perish. You yeah, know, um, absolutely. and he came on to be in the form of, of, of man to understand our, our issues and what we go through. And so, you know, I just, through my experiences, you know, I've, I've seen how God is just in, and through his son, you know, how he's made such a difference in my life and the healing and the transformation and, you know, from someone who didn't want anything to do with Christians to today working on the launch of a podcast ministry to share who Jesus is and to help women heal across the world. That's a transformation. That's that's God. It it, it can only be because I wouldn't say I was almost an atheist, but I was darn close yeah. at one time. So I'm, I'm just grateful that I can share who he is, and I feel called to doing that. And there's brokenness, but God redeems, restores, and I believe, you know, that's what he's called me to do, is share. Yeah. Is. Amen. Well, people can find you at alteredstories.org. Yes. And you're, if people, if you're interested, friends, in being involved or contacting Michelle, uh, go there, but she's still looking for donors and for volunteers. And um, she's you're putting together a board, which I think is really interesting um, to kind of to kind of manage that. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're looking for? 
Um, well, right now I've got a social media manager that I'm looking for. It's the details are on the website. Um, thank you, Eric, by the way, for sharing that. Um, and, you know, I just need also, um, we've got a board secretary opportunity and I have the details of that too, but really somebody that can come in and help us chair the board and they'll do the minutes and, you know, would be willing to help us pull together some processes and, you know, make sure that all the documents are, are prepped and stored and in a good place and uh, that the minutes are recorded and everything, you know, to be able to sustain. Um, I want to build a healthy nonprofit. That's the other thing. It's really important to me. I do it right, do it well, bring the right people in to help do that well. And, um, so somebody may, that's maybe had experience um, being a board secretary would be great, but not necessary. You know, obviously you have a heart for women and women's ministry and serving all those things. Yeah. Social media manager, people, you know, I really need someone who understands how to do Twitter well, how to do, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and, and you know, getting some continuity out there you know, of what we're doing to has got a marketing bent, although I'm doing a lot of it. I just not pure marketing, you know, I can do my best, right? <laughs> but those I, are key. And then of course, you know, um, I'm, I'm hoping to get some fundraising going on here. And, um, like I said, through office evolution here in Overland Park, there's so many networking events and meeting great people and yeah, you know, that's, that's good. Well, I wanted to mention that because you never know if somebody out there, one of our friends is listening and it just resonates with the message that you have and they want to reach out to you. We'll see what happens. Maybe God will, will do that. Or, you know, there's always, there's people who, you know, the, the, the problem in the world isn't the lack of money. The problem is getting people to, to give you money. So it always helps yes. to just ask. <laughs> and yes, say, hey. yes. And that feel called to give you money. Absolutely. You know? you, but like I said, we're trying to sustain, you know, our revenue. We're trying to find ways to sustain revenue. I'll, you know, donations, obviously, you know, where God calls people, he will, he, he calls you, he'll bring it to you. You know, I, I, and I respect that, but I also know that, you know, we have to be proactive and there are things you know, God wants us to do and take action, but I do believe oh, amen. also that uh, there's things that we can do uh, in terms of, you know, people willing to do a little fundraising or, if, you know, I've got a GoFundMe campaign out there. If, you know, yeah. people feel called to that, it's out there and there it's on our website. So that's another way of doing that too. All right. So alteredstories.org, friends, if this is something you're interested in being more involved in or you want to connect with Michelle, you can find her there. Michelle, anything else you want to leave us with? Yeah, just, you know, um, I would say his story, his glory. You know, that's the way it is. Um, as I see what he is doing, uh, not only in your life, and in uh, many Christians' life, you know, being able to radiate God's love in our life and, you know, to put him on the throne for his glory is really, you know, Billy Graham said, he knew a lot of people started ministries, but it was always about them, mm -hmm. some. <laughs> and I would say that Billy Graham hit the nail right on the head. It's not about us. It's about God and his glory. So to God be the glory here. Amen. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot for being here. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm excited to see what God's going to do with this and also what he's doing in your life and with your podcast. <laughs>